This is the Barbados Today Morning News for Thursday, December 5th. Thank you for joining us. I am Mary Claire Williams. Our top story, a former CEO who was appointed by the last Democratic Labour Party cabinet to manage the Hilton Barbados Resort, has sued the government over his dismissal in April this year. Henderson Williams, who also contested the city seat for the DLP in last year's election, appeared before the High Court yesterday with his attorneys Neil Marshall and Hal Gollop, QC. But the hearing was adjourned until January 30th because of a no-show by the government team. Barbados today obtained copies of court documents filed on November 13 this year. They show that Williams is suing Needham's Point Holdings Limited, the first defendant, and Needham's Point Development Inc., the second, on 11 grounds for a judicial review. It revealed by that by letter dated March 4, 2019, Williams was suspended with immediate effect pending disciplinary investigation into the then undisclosed alleged conduct. However, by letter dated April 30, 2019, Williams was informed that his employment had been terminated with immediate effect for reasons of gross misconduct. The letter also told him that he had the right to appeal, which he did. In other news, the Barbados Water Authority is cracking down on water theft. Word of this from Water Resources Minister Wilfred Abrams one day after it was revealed that four illegal water connections were found on the premises of the now-condemned liquidation centre. Abrams said he was not prepared to comment on the findings in the Bay Street building, but he said the issue of illegal water connections is a thorn in the side of the BWA. He said the BWA has been lenient in the past, but that may soon change. Anybody who is living on land can now apply for a water service. Measures were put in place to protect the water authority and to protect the owners of the land, but anybody now can apply for and be granted a water service. There's no reason now to have an illegal connection. So I expect the water authority to start cracking down in a major way on people who persist in this behavior, who have had every chance now to regularize themselves. And if it has to go involve the police, because it is a criminal action, if it has to involve the police, then it has to involve the police. Former Prime Minister Owen Arthur is raising concern over the diminished bilateral relationship between Canada and the Caribbean. Arthur described the relations as one based on a shared development outlook and common interest dating back to over 100 years. But he says Canada's interests have changed somewhat and the country now has a more global focus to its international relationships. In that respect, Canada has a relationship with the North American society. It was called NAFTA. And in some respects, that relationship with NAFTA has severe implications for the Caribbean. Whenever a country benefits, whenever a country in your neighborhood has access to trade arrangements, for the same commodities that are more beneficial than you have, then you can pay a very tremendous price for that disparities in the relationship. The head of the Barbados Alliance to End Homelessness, Skimar Safri, says the final preparations are being made before clients can be accommodated at its new shelter on Spry Street. Safri gave an update at a news conference yesterday. At the moment, we have not taken in anyone as yet because we are still awaiting um, one final piece of, um, what can I say, uh, one final piece of work to be done on the building. And it is ongoing at this moment and it should be finished within a week's time to allow persons to be in. And that part is obviously critical to persons being in the building because that's a safe, that's part of the, part of, part of the emergency of um, aspect of the building. Once that is done, we will be then um, allowing persons to come to the shelter. Meanwhile, Operations Manager Kimberly Hines Herewood says there has been an increase in the number of women seeking help from the Alliance. So often, like in the last week, we probably get over 10 females already from last week into this week. Any females, and they have children, but children 
staying at other persons and stuff like that. And these are new females? New females, yes. There's regional and international news after this short break. It's Festive Friday at the Bridgetown Night Market at Pelican Craft Center. Kick off the weekend this Friday from 4 p.m. to midnight with loads of food, drinks, and entertainment. Get ready for crop over with the Rhythm Root Street Parade. Party like it's Kadooman Day on the street around Pelican Village with costume reveler, music, and more. It's Festive Friday. It's Festive Friday at the Bridgetown Night Market at Pelican Village Center from 4 p.m. to midnight. Admission free. Barbados Today, news you can trust. Thank you for staying with us. We're back with news from the region. The government of Dominica is counting the cost of the protests over the last couple of days. Opposition supporters in the constituency of Marigot blocked the roads leading to the Douglas Charles Airport, making it difficult for passengers leaving and entering the island. In an address to the nation last night, Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt said some flights have already been cancelled as a result of the protest, and the cruise sector has been dealt a major blow. As a consequence of the recklessness and immaturity of the opposition leader and his supporters in Dominica, and after consultation with several key stakeholders, it is my duty to inform you that our worst fears have been realized. All cruise ships, all cruise ship calls to Dominica have been cancelled effective immediately. And that cessation of services shall remain in effect until after the general election period, when hopefully this madness would have subsided and we would have been to an end to this unwarranted blotch on our otherwise pristine, pristine record of peace, safety, and tranquility. On the international scene, U.S. President Donald Trump has called Justin Trudeau two-faced over a video in which the Canadian leader appears to mock him at a meeting of NATO leaders. Footage showed Trudeau, UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson, and the French leader Emmanuel Macron discussing an impromptu press conference held by Trump. NATO leaders agreed a statement of unity, but the 70th anniversary meeting held near London also saw several rows. Trump cancelled a press conference planned for after the summit. And that's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbadostoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, and like us on Facebook, and sign up for breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on iZumi Media in bus terminals and screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM. I am Marie Claire Williams. Good morning.